welcome back to the new features video series for Cubase 7. In this chapter, we'll explore the new workflow features in Cubase 7, including blind reader compatibility, search functions, quick access modes, and more. Let's return to the single window concept described in chapter one. This approach to the user interface provides multiple benefits. First, as we've already described, it brings the functions that you need most often to the main screen, making them easier to find and use quickly. Another benefit of the single window concept is that it allows you to navigate Cubase more efficiently without a mouse. This is just one way that Cubase 7 is optimized for accessibility by blind reader software. But the ability to tab through the Mix Console will expedite anyone's workflow. Watch how quickly I can enable items in the channel strip just by using Tab, Return, and Arrow Keys. You can even tab onto individual controls, press return, and then enter the numeric value directly. After you learn the sequence of required keystrokes, you'll notice a dramatic increase in speed. Another aspect of Cubase 7 which increases your speed is the plugin search capability. Clicking on an empty plugin slot opens a new search dialog. You have the controls to expand or collapse the tree and a search window. If you're not sure which plugin you want, or you're browsing for options, then expand the tree to see everything that's available. This is handy if you don't remember the name of the plugin you're after. On the other hand, if I know exactly which plugin I want, I can enter it here, for example, DJEQ. As soon as you press return or click the result, Cubase automatically inserts the plugin and calls up its editor. You can remove a plugin just as easily by selecting the first option, no effect. And notice what happens if I type reverb. Cubase picks up on the reverb family, so it shows choices like reverence, even though the word reverb isn't used in the name of the plugin. This same search capability is available for channels as well. You can see all the channels in your project by expanding the tree, or you can enter the name of what you're looking for and Cubase will begin to filter the results as you type. So you may only need to enter a few characters to find the channel you're after. And the channel search will find hidden channels too. As soon as you press return or click the result, Cubase automatically selects that channel. If the channel was hidden, this will turn its visibility back on. Another helpful feature is the new A-B comparison function for all plugins. You'll see these switches included on all plugins on Cubase 7. The first is an A-B toggle button, and the second is a copy button. If you have A selected, it'll copy to B. If you have B selected, it'll copy B to A. Let's use Retrolog for a quick demonstration. Here's the starting sound. If we toggle back and forth, you can see that the same setting appears in A and B. If I make a few changes while the selector's on B, I can pop back to A and hear the original sound. and back to B. If I like this new sound, but I want to keep experimenting, I can copy B to A and continue experimenting. And still go back to the latest version. Another way QA7 helps you move quickly is with the quick access mode for plugins. For starters, you can now create a new send effect directly from the mix console. Right click on an empty send effects slot in the rack and select the option to add effects channel. Pick out the effect you want and click on add track. Cubase instantly creates a new effects track, adds the plugin to that track and opens the plugin editor. And if we right click on the new plugin, you can jump right to things like the automation tracks for enable and send level and the ability to position this plugin pre fader. You can even copy the send effect. Then tab to the next channel and paste it. If you use the key commands, Command or Control and then C for copy and V for paste, this is even faster. Here you can add this parameter to a quick control slot or call up its automation track directly. And you can reopen the editor for any effects send plugin by double clicking on the associated rack slot. If you're preparing work for broadcast, then the dedicated master meter with EBU R128 compliant loudness metering can be a real time saver. 
This meter lets you keep an eye on the overall program loudness while you're still tracking and mixing. On-screen meters can tie up both screen space and CPU power. Cubase 7 now gives you the option of using mini peak meters in lieu of the main meter bridge. Enable this option with the Window Layout tool, and select the option for Channel Overview. But this pane gives you more than just a look at all the levels. You can use the Overview pane to navigate around large projects. You'll see a fine line along the very bottom of the Overview pane with colored segments which represent the various types of tracks. And a light blue rectangle shows you which channels are shown in the main Mix Console window. Now if I use the G and H keys on my keyboard, I can adjust the width of my channels, and you'll see the light blue rectangle respond. If you hover over it, a hand tool appears, and you'll see a pop-up telling you which channels are in view. You can click and drag to bring other channels into view. And you can right-click and access the various meter options. Now let's move on to the next chapter and dig into the channel strip.